Welcome to Content Disrupted, bold takes on brand marketing. I'm your host, Casey Noble, and together we'll explore what it takes to excel in brand marketing at one of the most exciting and disruptive times in industry history. Welcome back to Content Disrupted, bold takes on brand marketing. Our guest today is Sophia Hernandez, the global head of business marketing at TikTok. She's an innovative marketer and activist who's led iconic campaigns and brand initiatives for global Fortune 500 companies, including P&G, Netflix, and Spotify, just to name a few. She was chief client officer at consumer insights platform Suzy. And today she's at the forefront of brand and creator content innovation at TikTok, where she's helping businesses tap into new and diverse marketing opportunities across the platform. You might have seen her at the top of a most influential marketers or women in tech list, or maybe you just follow her on TikTok. In any case, we're really lucky to have her here to share her wisdom with you guys today. We're going to be talking about the future of content and brand marketing, embracing change. Sophia, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Casey. I'm excited to be here and chat with you. I can never get used to those bio intros. I always kind of blush a little, but appreciate all the nice things. Ready to have this conversation with you. It's exciting. Awesome. Well, you have so many accomplishments. It's honestly hard to (laughs) narrow down to one brief bio intro, I have to say. And I would love to kind of start there. If you can share a little bit with our listeners about your background and personal journey in marketing. How did you get into the industry? You know, what kind of were the major milestones that led you into your current role? I think very early on, I realized that I have a passion for people and what makes us tick. And I'm also very fully committed to being a change agent in this life. I grew up with a family of activists, have been marching since I was in my mom's belly. So I pretty much narrowed it down to being either a therapist or a marketer. And I fell in love with marketing because I saw an opportunity to really drive change in how brands were communicating with their audiences, especially, you know, this is now two decades ago, the advertisements we were seeing, the way brands were connecting with people is very different than today. And you know, fast forward 20 years, and I think my wish list has really fully manifested. My role here at TikTok has been over the past four years, really since the inception of the platform, to really partner with the marketing community and with brands of all sizes to help them understand how to evolve the way that they are connecting with audiences. Because arguably, we weren't connecting much in the past, and there's such an opportunity to do that now. I love that. You're really the perfect person, I feel like, to talk about change and evolution and just progress in marketing overall, given how much brands are now challenged to really play a meaningful role in terms of broader culture. I think that's a big challenge for brands and marketing in particular is sort of like how to do that and position themselves properly and be truly authentic and moving forward. You know, I feel like throughout your career, you've really been such a force, as you mentioned, for creativity, for change. Obviously, that's a personal passion for you. Right now, we're facing a time where, you know, there's still a lot of economic uncertainty, political uncertainty. There's a lot of budget tightening going on. And a lot of the marketers, you know, we've been talking to are really kind of feeling restricted. And there's this just sort of fear of messing up. But it almost seems like now, you know, creative risk taking and really being bold in the right ways is more important than ever. So so what's your advice for marketers who are facing that kind of fear and uncertainty when it comes to risk taking today? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. It's very top of mind. I meet with CMOs, CROs, CEOs across the globe at Again, mid-market companies to the major brands and and even talk to small business owners about how they can evolve their marketing practices. And there is definitely a trend in how do we do more with less? There's a trend in what is the true role of the CMO? And to your point earlier, how as a CMO, as the person responsible for brand and marketing, do I show impact to the bottom line? And I would say there are a few things that I even practice in my role. One is building really strong relationships with cross-functional stakeholders, 
the reality is we're all here to deliver against one unified goal, and that's profitability for whatever business we work for or belong to. And when you come to the table with stakeholders that way and you stop thinking about, well, this is my piece of the pie and that's yours, I do feel like moving out of those silos really helps drive the unity and more collaboration and cooperation. So to bring that to life more specifically for brands, one of their biggest challenges is actually practicing real-time marketing. It's something we've been talking about for decades, but not something anyone has done really well because of our internal operational kind of processes, right? There's procurement, there are legal, and we're used to being very comfortable with what we're putting out in the market. And what the community is asking us for now is more realness, more authenticity, more real-time reaction to the conversations that are being had. And that's requiring brands to build different types of relationships with their legal partners. So the overarching recommendation to everyone listening is start to think beyond the current structure that you exist within and how can that change to better deliver an experience for everyone that you want to lean into your brand. The other thing I'll say is, I mean, I run an org of about 600 people across the globe and probably 50 percent of what I do is marketing on a daily basis. As marketers, we really need to hold ourselves accountable to be, you know, not only CMOs, but like chief business officers, chief operating officers, chief innovation officers. It's the evolution of the role. There's been a lot of talk about the CMO role kind of dying off, and I actually think it's not going to die off. It's going to morph into something much more robust and much bigger. And so how do we start holding ourselves accountable for that growth? I think that you make a great point. It does seem like marketing is being looked at more and more as a department, if you will, that's responsible for innovation, where maybe that, you know, businesses were used to things being more product led previously. But with the amount of change in the way we have to communicate with customers and, you know, we specialize in content marketing. So even seeing content marketing as an extension of product, it's a service that you're providing really at the end of the day. You know, that's its own revenue driver versus cost center. So I wanted to pick your brain a little bit when we're talking about, you know, content and communicating with your customers in market. Are there specific sorts of creative risks that you're seeing brands taking or that you've encouraged, you know, partners through TikTok to take that you've seen, you know, really pay off? And I'm thinking one thing I've heard you mention before is about creator diversity and sort of pursuing the unlikely partnerships. That could be one example. But I was curious about, you know, what you're seeing really working in terms of like thinking outside of the box. It's not only my personal passion, but we do a ton of research here just to understand what the TikTok community wants from brands. And we have a stat that said 72% of TikTok users expect ads to include diverse representation, but only half of users feel brands are doing a good job at this. So 72% of brands' audiences are expecting them to have diverse representation, but only half feel like brands are actually delivering on this. So it's something we're hearing from the community. And here's why. The TikTok community is a global community. Regardless of where you live, the content that you're consuming is starting to expose you to different cultures to different recipes from around the world being cooked by people around the world. And so as this community's mind starts to expand because they're seeing more diversity on a regular basis, they're expecting brands to show up in that way too. And what I'd say to brands is the TikTok community really wants brands to show up as one of them. They're inviting that participation. They're not saying you don't belong here. This is for us. They're saying we want you here, but you need to show up like one of us. Mm-hmm. Are there any specific partnerships that stand out in your memory that were particularly successful in terms of brands? And I'm thinking especially businesses, because there are so many ways that you can partner with creators. It's not just, you know, as influencers and being a spokesperson to plug your product. I feel like there's been so much of that, but TikTok has been really innovative in terms of 
different ways to work with creators outside of, you know, those historical kind of examples. I'll give you a few that maybe feel unlikely. One is Warner Brothers. So Warner Brothers partnered with this fifth generation lobster fisherman who happens to be a TikTok creator. His name's Jacob Knowles. And they had him do a really fun promo video to build the hype for their new Aquaman movie. Now, unlikely partnership, right? But what I think is amazing is the way that the community responded. So, I mean, I can send you the TikTok and maybe we'll post the details when you make this public. But the comments are incredible. You have people saying this is the promotional content I want to see. Someone else said, tell Warner Brothers this totally worked because I had no idea there was an Aquaman movie coming out. Someone else said, this is the greatest ad I've ever seen in my life. Full stop. And it's because it's unexpected, right? Another example, and I don't know if you follow any of the Grandfluencers on TikTok, but, you know, the old gays partnered with Walgreens to spread the word about their My Walgreens app. And so the old gays content is amazing. You have to follow them if you haven't seen it. They're just so fun and lively and they just don't care, right? They don't care. They just put themselves out there. There's a group of people that they call themselves the Retirement House, an elderly community. They did a partnership with Carnival Cruise Lines and where they taught retired NFL star Rob Gronkowski, Lessons in Leisure. These are just some examples of, you know, how brands are starting to expand their view on who to partner with. And when I talk about diversity, it's not just cultural diversity, it's age diversity. It's basically anything you're not used to seeing over the past few decades, because we've seen a lot of the same. And, you know, I'm really passionate about disrupting the rooms of sameness. And the community is telling us the same thing. They want to see something different. And that said, I think that's such an important point. There's creator diversity, but also internally within the organization. You know, I know you've been a champion of this throughout your career is even the rooms people don't see that our customers don't see, like having diverse representation in the room, making marketing decisions. What's your experience been with driving that kind of change? And how have you seen that really generate surprising or more positive results. I feel like we could have a whole podcast about this. Yeah. So maybe I'll make three points as I think about the trajectory of my career. Again, started about two decades ago. Don't want to age myself that much. But when I joined in the ad community, everybody pretty much looked the same. And I was a bit of an outlier. And I'm very honest about this. I would say for the first seven years of my career, I was trying to fit in. You're young. You are in an environment that you've never been in before. You want to be successful. And, you know, my natural instinct, and I think this is just human nature, was to try to fit in, right? Like we want to fit in. We want to be light. And it wasn't until a friend told me, you know, if you just acted more like you do outside of work, at work, then I feel like you'd be so much more successful. And that really, like, it shook me at my core that it was that noticeable that I was a Sophia outside of work and a different Sophia inside of work. And so I started to just own who I am. And the more I did that, the more my leadership qualities evolved, the more, you know, like I built incredible teams, the more successful I was at what I was doing. And the better my work got. So I think people really need to challenge themselves to just be more and more of who they are in these spaces. It sounds so simple. It's hard to do. It takes a lot of courage. But when we start seeing people come to the table as themselves, we're going to start to feel the evolution of everything we're doing in the work environment. I think that's a great point and great advice for people who might be listening, whether you're earlier on in your career or a seasoned marketer who's been always kind of holding back. You're at TikTok. You just brought up so many examples of brands that are really doing outside the box things, exciting, unexpected things. And that's what our audience wants. In terms of innovation, 
being sort of the tip of the spear, where are you looking for new inspiration and innovation when you're thinking about maybe suggesting how to evolve the product? What data are you looking at or, you know, what aspects of the business are you looking at or what communities are you looking at? Yeah. So I promise I'm not just saying this because I work at TikTok, but I find so much inspiration from the TikTok community. You know, when you think about what, and by the way, this is how I guide brands as well. So when you think about what TikTok has done over the past four years, it offered everyone and anyone an opportunity to have a voice which is why I personally love this platform. But everyone knows Kabi Lam's story. He's the highest paid creator today, but he started as a factory worker in northern Italy. And there's so many stories like that where an everyday person was given a tool to express their creativity. And what happened was so many of these people took that opportunity and really used it to show what the world what they've got. And that's not stopping. Every day we have new creators on the platform. We have new topics that are being discussed in new ways. And so what I mean by that is there are so many behaviors that are unique to the TikTok creator community and the way people show up on the platform. One is I'll pretend like I'm doing a makeup tutorial. I just happen to have this next to me, but and I'm close to camera putting lipstick on or blush or mascara, but I'm talking about like a very serious social justice topic. That is a way to kind of reel you in, to get you to listen. And I think that's brilliant. And there's so many nuances to the behavior on the platform like that, that brands need to study and they need to learn so that they're not just writing a script or showing a before and after the way we normally do. Chipotle is great at this. They're incredible students of TikTok community culture, and they really do it right. They lean in low production. And I talk about this example all the time, but it's just, it's so brilliant. Food company shot how they make their rice, their famous cilantro rice, on a grainy, you know, iPhone or Android, don't know what they use, but someone's personal phone. And they just showed how they make the rice in the back kitchen and posted that. And we all know, those of us in marketing, that, the, you know, the lettuce has to be crisp and there has to be a droplet of water that makes it look scrumptious. And the, everything has to look perfectly colored. And here comes Chipotle doing something that the TikTok community loved because they felt like they were being authentic and they weren't just trying to show them perfection. They were just letting them in. This is how we make our rice. And by the way, so-and-so who works at, you know, this location and she's going to make it. So there's so much opportunity right now for brands and people in general to get inspired just by being in the platform. Mm -hmm. I think it's brilliant to mention the creator community, you know, I think is a always a source of inspiration for anyone. New ways of storytelling. You mentioned study the nuances, right? It can be the way they tell the story, the angle that you're taking, this emphasis on authenticity. I think it's a, you know, become kind of a buzzword in marketing authenticity, but it truly is showing up as yourself and not everything has to be filtered. I know there's been big sort of unfiltered movements, especially on social, but that's spreading sort of across other channels and aspects of marketing. So you mentioned the creator community, which has obviously grown. TikTok has been so influential in democratizing content creation and making the platform accessible to really anyone can be a creator. And we're experiencing with the democratization of content creation so much more diversity, so many positive changes, but it also makes the landscape more noisy. So you've mentioned a couple of ways. I think, you know, being authentic as something that a brand needs to constantly keep in mind to make sure you're standing up and showing up in the right ways. But are there other things that you're seeing brands doing or you think that brands are going to need to start doing that they're not doing enough of today to sort of stand out in the landscape? 
Yeah, I think, you know, when you talked about some of the challenges earlier that brands are facing, one was the financial piece and really proving ROI. I think this is another challenge. It's how do we continue to break through the clutter? And really, I would say the goal is to peak people's curiosity. And so there are a lot of ways to do that. And again, I just gave you an example of the trope of I'm putting on makeup. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm actually talking about a serious social justice topic. It's learning things like that from the community that are going to surprise and delight. We actually have our 2024 trends report coming out, and it gives a lot of insight to these TikTok platform trends and advice to marketers on how they can lean in. So definitely check that out. And sorry for that shameless plug, but it has everything you're asking me in it. And I think marketers will enjoy it. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. We'll definitely make sure that that's linked in the show notes for the podcast, just so you guys listeners know. Is there, you know, one trend that is maybe on the report that you could preview for us that maybe even you found surprising? Yes, there is one that I'll highlight here that I think is really fun. And I don't know if you've heard of Delulu, but it's essentially the fact that delusional type content really brings joy. And so what's happening in the TikTok community is people are taking comfort in some of the overwhelming realities of the world by adding a little bit of flair and lightheartedness to otherwise really dense and serious topics. So, you know, this is helping to manifest confidence. And if you think about someone like Tube Girl, she lives her life on the tube as if she's in a music video every day, right? And somehow she has like the air, you know, blowing her hair and she's singing along to a song. And she's on the two. And so it's this, it's like, maybe I'm having a rough day or I don't really want to go to work or whatever, but my life is fabulous because I'm shooting a music video every day on my way to work. So it's making light of serious topics. You know, I've seen this come to life for very serious topics like mental health. And not that that's something to laugh about, but the TikTok community uses this method to have an open conversation about it and to have a conversation that is two way. So people will engage in common and ask questions. So that's one thing. I think Delulu is something that brands can really lean into and they need to find their way and their lane, but it's a big trend that's here to stay. Oh, I love that. Thank you for sharing a little bit of insight into the trends report. We're going to see, I think, hashtag Delulu. That's really interesting. And I think TikTok has changed in particular, so much about the experience of consuming content for people. And you can learn things. You can get educational material. It's about joy and entertainment, but not only. You can really get substantive information. And I have seen articles about TikTok in particular being used almost like a search engine. I'm really curious from your vantage point how you see that unfolding in terms of the broader landscape, because people aren't necessarily typing into a search bar they're going to, especially younger users who are quickly becoming the professionals and will be the people in C-suite positions, they're going to TikTok to say, how do I do this? Or researching serious topics. So what's your take on, are we going to see consolidation? Are we going to see a shift away completely from traditional methods of searching for information? What do you think? So whenever we talk about search internally or with our brand partners, we actually talk more about discovery because since day one, and this goes to the conversation we had just a few minutes ago, there are so many people that have either discovered new topics, answers to questions, or have been discovered because of this platform. So everyday people like Kabi or so many creators have really been discovered through this platform. So we like to think about it as a discovery engine, whether you're being discovered or you're discovering things. That's really at our core since day one. And so because of the magic of TikTok, anyone, including brands, any brand can be discovered. And that's what's so exciting. You know, we don't operate on a social graph. We operate on a content graph, right? 
So that really helps democratize discovery on our platform. I love that, the idea of discovery rather than that sort of traditional content search mindset that's really just outdated. So folks, this is a way to think about evolving and how you need to evolve your content strategy. Yes. Actually, I'll just give you one personal example. We were thinking about where are we going to have our holiday party this year? And immediately three people in the room said, well, let's go on TikTok and search like New York City large event spaces. That is just naturally where people are going because you get more than a result. You actually get an experience. You're going to watch someone's experience and it feels authentic. It doesn't feel like it's an advertisement being pushed at you. They will talk about the good and the bad and help you kind of weigh your options. So this is definitely a behavior that we're seeing and that I even practice. I use it a lot to evaluate travel destinations or hotels that I want to stay at because I get a real inside view or I get the inside scoop on anything that I'm trying to discover. So again, just discovery is essentially our synonym to search. And that first person perspective, thinking about your storytelling in terms of an experience. People are looking for an authentic perspective, not necessarily to hear from the brand talking about the brand, but discovering things through people who've had the actual firsthand experience, whatever the topic may be. And I know it's typically known for especially product reviews and things like that, but it seems like it's just expanded so much beyond that. And so in terms of storytelling, even in terms of formats, how content's discovered on the platform, What's the next sort of frontier that you're looking at tackling at TikTok? Are there certain technologies you're looking at integrating, certain types of experiences that you think are sort of next frontier and important for content creation? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. What you're going to see more from us in 24 and beyond are more tools that allow creative people and really everyday people to express their creativity. And so we're really going to lean into creative tools this year, and you'll hear more about that throughout the year. But that is key for us. How can we continue to enable the TikTok community and our brand partners to create and to really show what they have to offer the world? Awesome. I would have to imagine that maybe there's a role for generative AI somewhere in that landscape, given how inevitable it is that it's going to disrupt everything. But Generative AI and content creation sort of like hand in hand today. And I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing when applied properly. We've talked a little bit about your career journey, what's shaped your philosophy. Any last advice that you have for folks who are new in the industry, marketers who hope to one day have a role like yours? What advice would you have given to your younger self or that you would give to them? as sort of a recipe for success, if you will. Yeah. So when I said earlier that it was either a therapist or a marketer, the reason I leaned marketer was because of creativity. Whether you are rooted in data science or you're an account manager at an agency or you're a brand manager that's focused on shipping cases, anything in the marketing ecosystem requires creativity and innovation. And so my ask or my advice or my challenge to anyone in the industry or moving into the industry is, one, think beyond your job description. You know, that's just there for a parameter, but you have to think beyond that. What more can you offer? How much bigger should your role be? How much smaller should your role be so that you can take on different components? So think beyond the role of a marketing leader or a CMO and think about what really needs to happen to deliver an incredible experience for your audience and the consumers you're trying to reach. And then on top of that, how can you challenge yourself to stay innovative? So, you know, so many CMOs are actually not on TikTok and they're really relying on their interns or younger employees and You know, a lot of the conversations I have with CMOs are like, oh, yeah, my 16 year old daughter's on the platform. I get it. And I'm like, no, you don't really get it unless you're in it. And when you're in it as a marketer, I'm like, oh, that could be an ad. Oh, that was brilliant. You know what I mean? Like you just start to see all of the opportunity and it gets the wheels moving. 
And so as marketers, we need to challenge ourselves to continue not only to be students of culture, but actual participants in culture. So that's really my advice to everyone. But what do I know? (laughs) Right. Yeah, no. Amazing advice. I love that. As someone who has sort of embraced TikTok more because my daughter loves it, even though she's very, very young, she's the one that got me more into TikTok and Instagram. And I've had so many campaign ideas sparked by just content that I saw that had nothing to do with the product. It was just the way, you know, someone presented on screen. So that's my new mantra moving into 2024. So I love to hear that as your recommendation as well. So I'll continue in that direction. Good. I love hearing it. Love it. If you have a couple more minutes, uh, we have a speed round. I'd love to put you through. This is nothing too heavy. Just our version of sort of, you know, the actor's studio questions. If I can ask you about five questions, just tell me what immediately comes to top of mind. Ready? Let's go. Okay. So as a marketer, what keeps you up at night? Staying on the pulse of culture. And what keeps you going? Creativity. And the people I work with. What marketing term do you love? I think I hate them all. I just, I think we're in such a stage of like evolving everything we've coined and termed and, you know, have written brand guidelines about over the last few decades. Like, I don't know that I have a favorite one right now. I think that's actually a great answer. But then my next one, maybe you'll have trouble answering too, is what marketing term do you hate? So maybe it's whittling down to the one that bugs you the most at this moment. So I really dislike the concept of B2B and B2C. I've been on both sides of those businesses and I've learned so much. But the reality is we're all talking to humans. And so I like the concept of B2H because whether it's hardcore performance marketing or very creative marketing, it should be all of that, regardless of who your audience is. I love that. I'm so glad you brought up that point. And I think everybody wants to say that businesses buy differently, their behaviors are different, but we always see time and time again, look at TikTok and other platforms. As soon as it's adopted in your everyday life, it becomes a business tool that's right around the corner. So people are using it still exposure to human beings where they are. So I'm so glad you raised that point. And by the way, like Casey and Sophia are still human beings working at that business and their attention is going to be peak if you address them creatively versus send them a 30 page white paper. Right. And I'm not saying there's no room for the 30 page white paper. I'm saying you're still talking to humans. So how do you get them to listen? I love it. This is going to be a random question list. What emoji do you think best describes the current state of marketing? The emoji where like you're laugh crying, like the tears are just pouring out, but you're laughing. That is the stage of marketing, not because we're laughing at marketing, but because it's joyful, but painful at the same time. Now, that's a good right? I haven't heard that one before. Awesome. I love that you're outside of the box on all of these. And then final question, the eternal debate, kind of a trick question, but quality or quantity? Ah, at TikTok, we believe in both. You know, we've grown so fast. In four years, we have a quality product. We've had big impact and we fundamentally believe you can have both quality and quantity. I love it. Sophia, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure to have you. I know our listeners are going to get out a lot of this conversation, and I want to remind folks to check the show notes because we'll have a link to the trends report there. And we'll try to get those links to some of the examples, brand examples that you mentioned as well in our conversation. So thanks again for joining, and I'll hopefully be in touch soon. Maybe we can have you back on and talk about the next evolution this time next year. I'd love that. Thank you so much for inviting me. This was really fun, Casey. Our pleasure. Thanks for listening to Content Disrupted, brought to you by Skyward. Stay up to date on the latest ideas and insights in brand building and content marketing by visiting our website at skyward.com. Join us for our next episode, where we'll continue to challenge marketing norms and inspire you with fresh strategies for growing business through brand storytelling. See you there.